Hey everyone, before this video begins, a quick request. If you could please let me know in the comments below if you saw an ad on this video or not. Just leave a comment saying I saw an ad or I didn't see an ad. Uh, it's really, really helpful and really important to me. Thank you so much. Let's move on with the video. In the history of global economics, few narratives are as compelling and cautionary as that of Argentina. At the dawn of the 20th century, this nation was positioned among the ranks of the world's most affluent, bolstered by an enviable wealth of natural resources and a rapidly growing export-led economy. With prosperity comparable to that of the United States and Western Europe, Argentina stood as a beacon of economic success. Yet, the Argentina of today paints a noticeably different picture, a nation grappling with economic volatility and a recurrent cycle of financial crises. This video seeks to unravel the complex fabric of Argentina's economic history to understand how a country with such promising potential has found itself ensnared in persistent economic turmoil. Welcome to the Bird's Eye Report, where through a meticulous examination of historical records, economic policies, and expert insights, we'll trace Argentina's trajectory from its golden age to its contemporary challenges. We'll navigate through the country's early 20th century prosperity, the interwar period's policy shifts, the post-war industrialization efforts, the tumult of political instability, and the modern-day repercussions of past decisions. At the outset of the 20th century, Argentina was heralded as a paragon of economic vitality. Its GDP per capita was among the highest in the world, a testament to the nation's robust growth and prosperity. The country's economic structure was underpinned by a lucrative agricultural sector with vast pastures yielding bountiful crops and livestock that were in high demand, especially from Europe. Argentina's agrarian exports became the cornerstone of its wealth. The country was the world's breadbasket, with beef and wheat exports particularly dominant. British and other European investments in Argentine railroads, ports, and meat processing facilitated the integration of Argentina into the global economy, creating an export infrastructure that was the envy of the world. The economic historian Roberto Cortez Conde has noted the influx of foreign capital was a driving force behind the modernization of the agricultural industry which in turn spurred the overall growth of the Argentine economy. These investments were complemented by a wave of immigration that brought a workforce and entrepreneurial spirit, further invigorating the nation's economy. During World War I, Argentina's position as a neutral country allowed it to trade with both allied and central powers, further bolstering its economy and establishing it as a creditor nation. The world's disruption of European agriculture meant an increased demand for Argentine products, augmenting the nation's wealth. In the words of the contemporary observer James Scobie, the Great War transformed Argentina into the granary of the world, with its economy reaching unprecedented heights of prosperity. However, this period was not without its challenges. The reliance on agricultural exports made Argentina vulnerable to fluctuations in the international commodity markets. The post-war years would see a decline in the demand of Argentine exports, exposing the limitations of an economy heavily dependent on a single sector. Argentina's golden age was characterized by an export-led economic model that facilitated rapid growth and considerable wealth accumulation. This era laid the foundations of the nation's early economic prestige, providing a stark contrast to the struggles that would emerge in subsequent decades. But as you'll soon see, the seeds of instability were sown during this period of opulence, which would eventually contribute to the country's economic downturn. The end of World War I marked the beginning of a new and challenging chapter in Argentine economic history. The nation's once thriving export market faced a sudden downturn as European agriculture recovered and global demand for Argentine commodities waned. The onset of the Great Depression in 1929 further exacerbated these challenges, delivering a harsh blow to the Argentine economy. The country's export revenues plummeted, and its economic model heavily reliant on foreign trade and investment began to show its vulnerabilities. In response to the global economic crisis, Argentina, under the leadership of President José Félix Uriburu and later Agustín Pedro, turned inward adopting a strategy of Import Substitution Industrialization or ISI. This policy aimed to reduce dependence on foreign goods by fostering domestic industries. According to economist Raúl Prebisch, a prominent supporter of ISI and a key figure in Argentine economic thought, the decline in our terms of trade has necessitated a profound restructuring of our economic model to prioritize internal development over external dependence. As the 1930s and 1940s progressed, Argentina's ISI policies gained momentum cultivating an emerging industrial sector. However, this shift was not without its costs. Protectionist policies led to increased government intervention in the economy, and the industrial growth that ISI promoted was often inefficient and heavily subsidized. This era also saw the emergence of Colonel Juan Domingo Perón, whose ascension to the presidency in 1946 would profoundly shape the nation's socioeconomic landscape. 
Perona's administration championed labor rights and welfare programs, embarking on ambitious public works and social welfare projects. These endeavors, though popular and reflective of Perona's social justice principles, were expensive and necessitated significant government spending. Perona's economic policies, as articulated by the Argentine historian Felix Luna, were a double-edged sword providing immediate social benefits, but at the cost of fiscal imbalances that the country would struggle with for years to come. The nationalization of key industries and the expansion of the public sector led to an increase in the national debt and the stoking of inflationary pressures. By the mid-20th century, the seeds of economic instability had been firmly planted. The protective barriers erected to nurture domestic industries also isolated Argentina from the technological advancements and competitive markets that drove global economic growth. The economic nationalism that seemed a solution in the face of the Great Depression's immediate threats laid the groundwork for a series of long-term structural issues. After the Golden Age followed this period of transformation and turbulence. The shift from an export-oriented economy to one focused on import substitution industrialization coupled with expansive social policies set the stage for both progress and strife. These developments, while rooted in a desire to foster economic independence and social equity, inadvertently contributed to the fragility and volatility that would characterize Argentina's economy in the decades to follow. The mid-20th century in Argentina was marked by a tumultuous interplay of politics and economics, a pendulum that swung between authoritarian regimes and democratic governments, each with its own economic implications. The period was characterized by a series of military coups that disrupted any semblance of economic continuity, beginning with the overthrow of President Juan Domingo Perón in 1955. Political instability became a chronic issue, as noted by political scientist David Rock, who observed that Argentina's military interventions in politics became as much a part of its economic cycle as inflation or deficits. These interruptions hindered long-term economic planning and policy consistency, breeding an environment of uncertainty that was harmful to investment and economic stability. With each new government, whether military or civilian, came attempts at economic reform. These ranged from efforts to continue import substitution industrialization to liberalization measures aimed at opening the economy. However, the lack of continuity and the frequent policy reversals undermined these efforts. The economy during this period was also significantly impacted by the recurrent issue of foreign debt. Successive governments borrowed heavily to fund development projects and to cover budget deficits, leading to an accumulation of debt that would burden the nation for decades. As the debt grew, so did the country's vulnerability to external shocks, which were felt acutely during the oil crises of the 1970s. Furthermore, the economic strategies of this period often led to rampant inflation, a problem that was exacerbated by wage price spirals and fiscal indiscipline. The economist Carlos Diaz Alejandro described the Argentine economy as an example of how chronic inflation can evolve into hyperinflation as the government's efforts to stimulate the economy through wage hikes and spending led to an unsustainable fiscal deficit. The political instability had a direct correlation with economic policy. Each military regime and subsequent democratic government sought to control inflation and stimulate growth through various measures, including wage freezes, price control, and trade restrictions. Yet these policies often resulted in short-lived gains, followed by economic downturns that eroded public confidence in the government's ability to manage the economy. The culmination of this cycle of instability was the military dictatorship that began in 1976, which implemented a radical economic liberalization program that included the deregulation of financial markets and significant cuts to public spending. While initially leading to a surge in foreign investment and temporary economic stabilization, these policies also led to increased unemployment and social inequality. This was an era where the interwoven threads of political unrest and economic mismanagement entangled Argentina in a web of instability. The frequent shifts in governance and economic direction during this period laid a precarious foundation, one that was struggled to support the weight of the nation's social and fiscal ambitions. The chronic instability not only stifled growth but also engendered a deep-seated economic uncertainty that would haunt Argentina in the years to come. The latter part of the 20th century saw Argentina grappling with an increasingly intractable economic crisis, characterized by rampant inflation that spiraled into hyperinflation by the late 1980s. The country's economic fabric was strained to its limits as prices skyrocketed, savings evaporated, and the national currency's value plummeted. This period of hyperinflation reached its apex in 1989, with annual rates exceeding 3,000% profoundly disrupting the lives of Argentine citizens and shaking confidence in the nation's financial institutions. The origins of this hyperinflationary crisis can be traced to the persistent fiscal deficits and monetary expansion that had characterized the preceding decades. 
Economist Domingo Cavallo noted the repeated attempts to stimulate economic growth through expansionary fiscal policies without a corresponding increase in production led to a vicious cycle of money printing and price increases. This cycle was exacerbated by wage indexation mechanisms that perpetuated inflationary pressures. In response to this dire situation, the government implemented a series of structural reforms, the most significant of which was the Convertibility Plan of 1991. Under the leadership of then-President Carlos Menem and Economy Minister Cavallo, this plan pegged the Argentine peso to the US dollar at a 1 to 1 exchange rate, effectively curtailing inflation by tying the money supply to the country's foreign exchange reserves. Initially, the convertibility plan succeeded in stabilizing the currency and bringing down inflation. It was hailed as a remarkable turnaround, with the International Monetary Fund and other international observers lauding Argentina's economic recovery. The fixed exchange rate also encouraged a surge in foreign investment, leading to a period of significant economic growth in the early 1990s. However, the rigidity of the convertibility system eventually became a straitjacket for the Argentine economy. The peso's overvaluation made exports less competitive, leading to chronic trade deficits. Additionally, the economy became increasingly vulnerable to external shocks, such as the Mexican peso crisis of 1994 and the Brazilian devaluation of 1999. The failure to adapt the currency's peg in light of these external pressures and the continued reliance on foreign borrowing to finance deficits ultimately led to the plan's unraveling. As one economist and historian noted, the convertibility plan, while effective in curbing inflation, sowed the seeds of its own destruction by fostering an unsustainable fiscal and external imbalance. By the end of the 1990s, the Argentine economy was mired in recession, and the government's ability to maintain the currency peg was increasingly in doubt. The structural reforms that had brought temporary stability now faced the challenge of adapting to a changing global economic landscape, a challenge that would prove insurmountable as the new millennium approached. This entire period is a chronicle of short-term triumphs and long-term tribulations. The structural reforms and stabilization plans of the 1990s, while initially effective, failed to address deep-seated economic imbalances. The rigidities imposed by the convertibility plan ultimately contributed to a situation where the Argentine economy was caught between the demands of fiscal discipline and the realities of a globalized market, setting the stage for the profound crisis that would unfold in the early 21st century. As the 20th century waned, Argentina was on the cusp of what would become one of the most devastating economic crises in its history. The year 2001 would serve as the epilogue of the country's struggle with its currency regime and fiscal policy, culminating in a profound financial and social upheaval. The crisis had now been brewing for several years, as the government struggled to maintain the parity between the peso and the dollar, a keystone of the convertibility plan. The fixed exchange rate had just a few years ago been the bastion against hyperinflation, now proved to be a shackle as it eroded Argentina's export competitiveness and exacerbated the country's external debt. Economic analysts such as Paul Bluestein have highlighted that the Argentine government's rigid adherence to the convertibility created a fiscal straitjacket that made the economy increasingly vulnerable to both internal and external shocks. This vulnerability became evident as the country faced a massive withdrawal of foreign capital and a drying up of the international credit lines in the late 1990s. This situation reached a critical point when in December 2001, Argentina defaulted on its sovereign debt declaring a moratorium on payments that amounted to over $100 billion. This default was the largest in history at the time and precipitated a profound banking crisis. The government imposed restrictions on bank withdrawals, a policy infamously known as the Correito, which limited the amount of money people could withdraw from their accounts, leading to a widespread public outrage and protest. The social fallout was immediate and severe. Unemployment soared, poverty rates increased dramatically, and incidents of social unrest and protests became commonplace. As noted by the sociologist Maristea Svampa, the crisis of 2001 was not just economic. It was also a profound social and political crisis that shattered the trust of the Argentine people in their institutions. In the aftermath of the crisis, Argentina experienced a period of political instability, with several presidents taking and leaving office in quick succession. However, by 2003, under the presidency of Nestor Kirchner, the country began to stabilize. Kirchner's administration renegotiated the country's debt and abandoned the convertibility system, allowing for a significant devaluation of the peso. These measures, along with a favorable global commodity boom, helped Argentina to rebound with strong economic growth in the years following the crisis. The recovery, though significant, was not without its criticisms. Some economists argued that the measures adopted post-crisis were only short-term fixes that did not address structural issues such as fiscal discipline and inflationary pressures. 
Others, like Nobel laureate Joseph Stiglitz, suggested that Argentina's recovery offered a blueprint for how countries could restore growth and stability after a debt crisis by focusing on policies that promote domestic demand and job creation. As Argentina further navigated the turbulent waters of the early 21st century, the legacy of its past economic policies continued to cast a long shadow over its prospects for sustainable growth and stability. In the wake of the early 21st century crisis, Argentina's journey through economic recovery and reform has been punctuated by a series of contemporary challenges that continue to shape its fiscal and social landscape. These challenges are multifaceted, encompassing inflation, currency devaluation, and fiscal deficits, which together present a complex scenario for policymakers. The persistent inflationary trend remains one of the most pressing issues. Despite various efforts to curb price rises, inflation in Argentina has continued to outpace that of most other countries in the region. Economist Eduardo Levi Yayati knows that Argentina's inflation is not merely a monetary phenomenon, but is deeply rooted in its economic structure, characterized by a high level of indexation and a history of fiscal laxity. This entrenched inflation erodes purchasing power and savings, perpetuating a cycle of economic uncertainty. Currency devaluation has been another feature of the contemporary economic environment in Argentina. The peso has faced repeated devaluations, impacting the country's international trade and leading to a fluctuation in import prices that contributes further to inflation. Devaluation, while providing short-term competitive advantages for exports, has long-term implications for investor confidence and the stability of the financial system. Fiscal deficits have also been a recurring theme in Argentina's recent economic history. Attempts to address social and economic disparities through public spending have often resulted in budget deficits that necessitate external borrowing, thereby increasing the national debt. As financial analyst Carlos de Sousa said, Argentina's fiscal deficits are a reflection of its struggle to balance social expectations with economic realities. The impact of these economic challenges is compounded by political factors. Recent administrations have oscillated between different economic strategies, from market-oriented policies to those favoring state intervention. These shifts often reflect broader ideological differences within Argentine society and politics, making consistent economic policy difficult to achieve. Moreover, Argentina's relationship with international creditors and institutions has been fraught. Negotiations with the International Monetary Fund and other lenders have been critical in shaping the country's economic policies. The terms of these agreements aimed at ensuring fiscal discipline and economic reform have frequently sparked debate within Argentina regarding sovereignty and economic self-determination. Looking to the future, Argentina faces the task of fostering sustainable economic growth while managing its debt obligations and addressing structural weaknesses. Since 2019, the COVID-19 pandemic, the war in Ukraine, and maybe most recently, the war in the Middle East have added another layer of complexity as the global economic downturn has impacted Argentina's recovery efforts. Despite these challenges, there is cautious optimism among some economists who believe that Argentina can leverage its rich natural resources, human capital, and industrial base to chart a path towards economic stability and growth. As I'm writing the script today, November 20th, 2023, Javier Milei has just been elected as the new president of Argentina. Already hundreds of articles have flooded the internet about his election with about 90% of them focusing on how he will address the problem with Argentina's economy. I guess that part remains to be seen. The nation stands at a crossroads, with its future hinging on the ability to enact reforms that address inflation, devaluation, and fiscal imbalances. The resilience and ingenuity that Argentina has displayed in the past offer hope, Yet the road ahead is fraught with the need for prudent economic management and the reconciliation of social and fiscal policy goals. As Argentina confronts these challenges, the enduring question remains. How will it navigate the delicate balance between economic reform and social cohesion in the quest for prosperity? As we've journeyed through the intricate economic history of Argentina from its early 20th century prosperity to its contemporary challenges, it's clear that the nation's economic narrative is both a reflection of its internal dynamics and the vicissitudes of an ever-changing global economy. Argentina's trajectory tells us about the critical importance of economic diversification, the dangers of over-reliance on specific sectors, and the profound impact of political stability on economic performance. The Argentine experience also underscores the complexities of implementing economic reforms within a democratic framework, where social expectations must be balanced with fiscal realities. The words of economic historian Paul Samuelson resonate when considering Argentina's past and future. Economics is a study of cause and effect relationships in an economy. The causes of Argentina's economic decline are manifold, entwining historical legacies, policy missteps, and external shocks. The effects are evident in the nation's enduring struggle with inflation, debt, and social inequality. Yet, it is within this very narrative of decline and resilience that Argentina must find lessons for its future. 
its repeated comebacks, despite formidable odds, demonstrate a nation's capacity for reinvention and recovery. As noted by economist and Nobel laureate Robert Lucas, the potential for economic growth resides as much in the ability to implement change as the change itself. The path forward for Argentina is not predetermined. It is shaped by the choices made by its people and leaders. And that's all I have to say about uh, Argentina for this video. Of course, vastly oversimplified. But uh, yeah, as always, let me know what you think about this topic in the comments below. Any comments or insights that you might add, especially if you're from Argentina, definitely leave a comment below uh, your opinion on this topic. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot and it lets me know that you guys like content like this. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.